Ooh, run, bird. Hi, people at Interwebs. It's your favorite Banner Warehouse Sarah here with another car review. And today I have a 2021 Volkswagen Atlas SEL 4Motion R-Line. Such a long title. 2021, the Atlas got an updated front end. For those of you that are Volkswagen nerds, you probably already knew that. So good for you. Cookie. Also, because it's the R-Line model, you have aggressive front bumper covers. Kind of like when you get a GTI versus a Golf R. The Golf R has aggressive front bumper. Yeah, same thing, same, same. It also has holes right here that you can stick your fingers in because it's functional aero as well. And it has hella nice headlights. Weep, weep. Weep, weep. The bird's saying hi to me. Anyway, this Atlas has 21 inch wheels, which kind of ruins its capabilities off-road, but I'm still gonna take it off-road later anyway, so it doesn't matter. They're wrapped in 265, 45 tires. You thought I was gonna say the name of the tire, didn't you? Nope, you can Google it. Just kidding, they're Pirellis. And those holes I was talking about, the front bumper cover earlier, yeah, well they dump out right here in the front of the wheel well because functional. I found it kind of confusing though that the R badge on the door says R, but this isn't a true R model, it's just an R line. I guess because this is the shape of a line, it counts, maybe. I need to get this out of the way first. I'm a fan of the overall look of the back of the Atlas. Now, there's some serious problems back here. First of all, the badge where it says SEL V6, this isn't a V6, it's a VR6. Secondly, I'm not a fan of fake plastic tip covers on the back bumper. However, they went an extra step above by putting fake holes in the tips. These are plastic plugs in the fake exhaust tip. That's just too far, Volkswagen, too far. However, they totally redeemed themselves by incorporating an R in the LED element in the taillight. That's classy. I like how they hid the Reese hitch in the rear diffuser because it's all black, it blends in. And in case you want to know what the towing capacity of this thing, here is the towing capacity in a useful unit of measure. You are welcome, internet. Storage capacity wise, you can fit approximately 2.76 Sarahs back here with crooked necks because this is not comfortable. Everything you see here is what you get with the SEL R-Line 4Motion package. There are no other extra things added to this. So it's fairly loaded in here, but keep in mind, this is almost a $52,000 vehicle, so it should be fairly loaded in here. The seats in here have this professional, aggressive look to them. The bolstering looks aggressive, but it's not the greatest bolstering, actually. It is a comfortable seat. They are heated as well as ventilated, and the steering wheel is heated too. I wish they made a ventilated steering wheel. That would be weird though, because if you really gripped it tight and it had air coming out of it, would it make like weird sounds as you're holding onto the steering wheel? I have this driver's seat as far back as it will go. Plus I got it tilted back a little bit because that's how I roll. And my knees are a good six inches from the back of the seat plenty of room in the back of this thing. For 52 grand, some people are gonna say that it shouldn't have any cheap, hard, textured plastic in the interior, but I disagree. I think that looks quintessential Volkswagen. It just makes sense in here. It fits a Volkswagen, and I like it. It's durable feeling. Well, that's nice. I have my own climate control back here and heated seats. Nice. I like how they got little red and blue lights for the rear climate control. Yep. Ooh, that's a good, the back seats on here recline quite a bit. The door cards right here have white stitching and they look like a pair of Puma shoes. Old, old. Okay. I am almost six foot tall with tennis shoes on. Look at this headroom. And I have tons of leg room because this isn't pushed all the way back. The steering wheel's got a nice flat bottom to it and a little R badge. The giant panoramic roof in here has a mesh shade that lets in a little bit of light. It's a nice touch. And the lights, speaking of touch, ooh, they're LED. Wait, is this LED? That's a pretty LED. 
Oh, it's got like this little frosted glow to it. Oh, there's some more lights back here for the third row. Also LED, thank you. There's a little tray up here on the dashboard and thankfully this doesn't have enough torques to make anything fly off the dash when you give it the beans and hit you in the face. Center console with a deep boy. It's just one USB inside there. Dual rear USBs. What is this? Oh, it's a power inverter. How about that? Volkswagen, you almost nailed it with the third row seating. I thought there was gonna be USBs back here, but it's not. It's just an old school cigarette lighter. So if you have children that smoke, the back seat will be great for them. This does have wireless charging and I accidentally stuck one of the penguins inside there. And I don't know if it's the same as sticking a penguin in a microwave, but I'm pretty sure it's dead. All right, time to start this thing up with this VR6 Roar. Rev limiter is aggressive. Look what it does to the camera. That's crazy. Cell phone in storage compartment cannot be charged. Oh, because the penguin. Before we get going, as far as the tech and the gauges and all that stuff goes, the Fender audio system in here is spot on. I'm a huge fan of it. But the infotainment system in this vehicle has to be my favorite out of any I've ever reviewed before. And I love that when you hover your finger over the screen, it automatically brings up the menu without you having to touch it. Just like the gauges in the Audi, you can switch your navigation over so your navigation is right here in your gauge cluster and of course down there you'll still have your speedometer as well it does have an electronic parking brake and the auto start stop which you can defeat i have to say the auto stop start is kind of pointless with this engine because the fuel economy just is not the greatest and also the electronic parking brake it's decent because it doesn't get intrusive so like if you actually forget it's on you need to back out of your driveway or whatever you just tap the gas and it turns off fairly quickly so that's nice safety feature wise it has all the safety features a modern car should have. It also has a self park mode, which I haven't really messed with because I haven't had an opportunity to, but that's kind of a nice feature. Even though this thing has 21 inch wheels on it, we're still gonna do a little bit of off-roading, a little bit. I'm just gonna go down a trail. I've always wanted to see what is at the bottom of it and I'm going to check out how the off-road mode stuff works. When you switch into off-road mode, it gives you this little gauge cluster so you can see you have your oil temp, your water temp, and then your degrees for which way you have your wheel cut. And then you can also go in here and there's more gauges. You can pull it down and then again, you have your altitude. And if you're really obsessed with your altitude, I guess you could just make them all altitude. Yeah, there you go. I'm obsessed with my altitude, 3661. Down in the center console, you get this little wheel that you can turn and you can adjust the off-road modes. So there is a snow mode. That's cool, it puts a little snow graphic on the side of an Atlas. Road mode, normal, sport, eco, and custom. And then there is off-road. That's got mud. I wish it was mud around right now off-road custom which gives you the ability to adjust things this has quite a bit of off-road features it's a shame it doesn't have good off-road tires there's a sign on the side of the trail that says no target shooting and it's full of bullet holes good job arizona good job Ooh, this is a little more aggressive than i was looking for I'm gonna turn off all these little motion sensors because they're a little excessive. Like the bush is 10 feet away. <laughs> I can see it way out there and it's like warning me. I'll give it this. It's not limited in the traction department at all with these wheels so far. It's just limited in how short the sidewall is. Ooh, run bird. I mean, fly. <laughs> down there oh I'm not going down that way that's too aggressive I know how this looks on camera and it doesn't look that bad but I am not taking a vehicle of 21 inch wheels and low profile tires down this that's just asking to screw a rim up so there's a summary of its off-road capabilities 
excellent computer aids. It feels like it would do great just with a different wheel and tire. This thing doesn't even fit in the garage. Wow, it's way down there. You could fit a huge engine in this bay. Hello, and welcome to Garage Science with Sarah. Powering this 2021 Atlas is Volkswagen's EA390 24 valve 3.6 liter VR6. I'm sorry, Volkswagen, but this is incorrect. It's VR6, not V6. That produces 276 horsepower at 6,200 RPM and 266 pound feet of torque at a healthy and respectable 2,750 RPM. Now, if you don't know what VR6 means, basically it's a V6 that's tighter. I'll draw it for you. This cluster of dots that I hope I'm pointing at loosely resembles the positioning of cylinders in a traditional V6. Notice you have three cylinders on one bank, three cylinders on the other bank. This cluster of dots that I'm probably not pointing at loosely resembles a VR6. Notice the cylinders kind of skip, stagger. It's kind of like an inline six, but kind of also like a V6, hence VR6, tighter packaging. I'm sure there'll be at least one YouTube certified mechanic that's going to complain because that is not the correct firing order of a VR6. Deal with it. In the name of science, it is now time to give it the beans. I'm going to put this thing into sport mode by pressing this button in the center, and then I'm going to put ESC into sport. Because sports, we're doing sports things. All right, give this thing a little assistance and let it eat. Ready? Go. Roar. The engine sounds good. Come on. Come on, you can do it. Get up there. drivetrain found on this Atlas is a eight-speed automatic transmission. All-wheel drive, thanks to a Borg Warner Generation 5 haldex based all-wheel drive system because this is a transversely modded engine. In a nutshell, what that means is there's some PFM going on up here and when need be, power is transferred to the rear. Torque, actually, if you want to get scientific here. All right, it's time for the braking test. No one behind me. Ready? wasn't that great it kind of it it got cockeyed a little bit I didn't like that braking I'm so sad because I was so excited when I found out this had a VR6 in it that was the thing I was looking forward to the most about reviewing this and this engine is just not right in the Atlas you're better off getting the 2 liter turbo at least that feels quicker and the fuel economy in here is atrocious other than that, I love the way it looks. The interior styling, spot on. I love Volkswagen interiors. There's tons of tech in here that actually is enjoyable to use. Love the gauge cluster. And it's comfy. Not much road noise. I would recommend it. I just recommend getting the 2 liter turbo. Volkswagen, give us twin turbos in the VR6. Don't kill it off. Just save it and make it better. If you guys have never seen one of my car reviews before, I have multiple categories to rate and assess them, starting with the bean score. It is a rating of one to five beans based on the feeling you get inside your gut when you give it the beans. And this Atlas with the VR6 and four motion is getting a rating of... I was kind of hoping for more because I just remember the VR6s being such incredible engines, and they are when you stuff them inside a tiny Golf, but Inside this giant Atlas, I feel like it's just not enough. Next is the meatball score. It is an assessment of a vehicle's off-road capabilities, tackling rocks that look like meatballs. Not taste, just look, don't eat rocks. <laughs> this 
Atlas is getting a rating of DQ Meatball. It's disqualified because you can't really assess it with these wheels and tires. I feel if you just chose a different trim model, this thing would be phenomenal off-road. Next is the cookie score. It is a rating of one of five cookies based on what you get for what you spend. It's an assessment of value. And this SEL premium trim model of the Atlas is getting a rating of... It's getting an average-ish score because of the fact that it is a little over $50,000, even though it's packed full of technology and it's flat out a nice vehicle. But I think for some people, they see the Volkswagen badge and over $50,000 and they might be just like, I could just get base model Audi or a used one. Lastly is the Penguin score. It is a rating of one to five penguins based on how much I personally like a vehicle. And the Atlas is getting a rating of 2.5 penguins. It's getting an average rating because of the fact I had such high expectations because it has a VR6. I kind of got my hopes up and I was slightly disappointed. Although I do like the way it looks and it's nice on the inside. It's just getting an average rating. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this review and I'll see you soon with another. Bye.